Sometimes I think, how many books are there all over the world? Maybe a billion? Ten billion books written through history? It's difficult to guess. Philosophies, thoughts, debates and theories. Books are outstandingly massive human products. Of course, some of them contain the truth. I'm not even sure till now if that really exists. I mean the complete truth, the absolute truth. What I know for sure that this simply can hardly come from another man. What is the source of the Quran? El milagro del Quran, un libro de milagros científicos. Look around. Think with your own minds, logically, without being biased. There are only three alternatives. If we falsify two of them, then we are proving the third. Either the Quran is a revelation from God, or a revelation from Satan, the devil, or authored by a human being, whether Prophet Muhammad or someone else. First, let's discuss the first alternative. Can the Quran be a revelation from Satan? Had Satan write the Quran or reveal the Quran to Prophet Muhammad, he would have not cursed himself in every other page. He would not ask people to say the truth and be merciful and kind to their neighbors and kind to their parents. I think he would have told people to tell lies and fornicate and steal. It is among the Islamic traditions and the instructions of Prophet Muhammad to ask refuge with Allah from Satan, the cursed Satan. So it cannot be from Satan. The third alternative, which is, can the Quran be a product of a human being? whether Prophet Muhammad or someone else. Let's discuss the first one. Can it be a product of Prophet Muhammad? Can he be the author of the Quran? If you think about it, Prophet Muhammad was an Arab who was sent in the beginning to the Arabs with an Arabic Quran. Why would he intimidate the Arabs by naming one long chapter of the Quran after a Jewish, an Israelite, Mary, the uh, mother of Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. He could have named it Khadija after his beloved wife, or Fatima after his beloved uh, daughter. Who can tell me few verses from the chapter Khadija or Fatima or Amina, his mother? No one, because there is no any chapter in the Quran named after any even Arab woman. And if this Quran was the innovation of him, I mean Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, as some have claimed, then he would have made mistakes, or he would even be disabled, or even just ignored and disregarded all or most of these scientific facts. It's quite amazing. The one who was given revelation with these divine words of Quran was an illiterate. Also, there are many verses in the Quran that are disciplining Prophet Muhammad himself. One whole chapter is called Abasa, which means he frowned. And it's about an incident that happened that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in an important meeting with the leaders of Quraysh, his biggest enemy, the tribe of Quraysh, trying to convince them to live peacefully with Muslims and to accept this new religion and to uh, abstain from worshipping uh, the, the idols and to abstain from discriminating against women and slaves. So it was an important meeting and one of his companions heard his voice and he was a blind man. So he came to Prophet Muhammad telling him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, give me an advice. So when the Prophet saw him, he felt like it's not time for this. So the Prophet frowned and he turned his face and he kept talking to the 
uh, leaders of Quraysh, and the man understood that he is in an important meeting and he left. That's all. If you think about it, you don't find that the Prophet did anything wrong. But the verses descended, for, descended on him from heaven saying, Nay, this is a reminder. Don't you ever do this again. And actually, uh, if you think about it, the man was blind. He never even knew that the Prophet frowned except from the Quran. The Prophet even never uh, uh, meant to uh, hurt his feelings. And his feelings were not even hurt. Maybe if it was up to Muhammad, I think it would be logical when he corrects himself for something that everybody thought was wrong, something that caused a problem. At that point, he would amend it and say this is the divine correction. That makes sense. But why would he do that about something that no one considered as wrong? Something that nobody even saw happening. How can he say so about himself? How can he be disciplining himself like that? Uh, also take into consideration that his name was not mentioned in the Quran except five times. It's also intriguing that the Holy Quran is the only book on earth that never had the author's name written on its cover. Now let's discuss the possibility of the Quran being authored by another human being, not Prophet Muhammad himself also. No human being can be the author of the Quran for so many reasons. Number one, the Quran predicted uh, future events. The Quran has a miraculous scientific aspect. The Quran has a miraculous linguistic aspect. And the Quran has a miraculous legislative aspect. Let's talk about the first one, predicting future events. There are events in the Quran like um, the Romans being able to regain their land and defeat the Persians after being defeated. There's a whole chapter in the Quran called the Romans and it starts like that. Uh, the Romans has been defeated. But very soon they will be victorious. It's like saying today that the USSR, the Soviet Union, will come back within very few years, very few years, and uh, uh, defeat the, the, the United States of America. If anyone says so now, people will say that it's crazy. At that time, the Roman Empire was collapsing. They were losing their territories to the Persians. Egypt was invaded by the Persians and most of the territories uh, ruled by the Roman Empire. At that time, the verses of the Quran were descending on Prophet Muhammad saying and challenging people by saying the Romans are defeated, but within a few years, they will be victorious. I think this proves easily that it is not his own handiwork. Ah!